and where he played pure rhythm and blues and blues music all the time. Mm. And I mean, that completely blew my mind. And actually, when I went to high school, mm -hmm. uh, a couple of years later, I was on the campus and I didn't know anything about the music industry, but I was on the campus where there were about five or six vocal groups who had records on the radio mm -hmm. who were going, who were attending that school. And the first day I went there, I, I, I went, you know, to all of my council teachers and everything to get signed up to classes. And then at lunchtime, mm -hmm. I went and bought me a, a roll and some spaghetti. <laughs> Oh my God. And I sit down at this table, outside mm -hmm. table, to uh, to eat, and I heard this sound. I had never heard anything like it before in my life. And so I wrapped my food up, and mm -hmm. I went walking. Mm -hmm. Following that sound, and uh, the school had bungalows, you know, and some kids were behind the bungalow. Mm. And I finally got to where they were, and they were singing doo wop. Ah, and they stand yeah. there with their lips protruding in each other's faces, ooing and ah, and, and singing. They had a song called Dreamy Eyes, which they had recorded. Mm -hmm. a group called the Youngsters, and I just fell in love right that minute with the doo wop music. And a little later, I heard a guy named Jesse Belvin on the radio singing. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know who Jesse Belvin is, but Jesse Belvin was, he was a, one of the greatest singers that ever come out of Los Angeles. He inspired most all of us who are in the record industry. <clears throat> You're giving us some history. Yeah, Jesse used to have groups at his house all day long singing. They'd be, you know, he, he lived music, you know. Mm -hmm. And he may had hit records. I don't know if you ever heard of "Good Night, My Love." Mm -hmm. uh, guess who? Uh, he had quite a few hit records back in the in the fifties and the early sixties mm -hmm. until he was killed in the sixties. Mm. But Jesse, I heard him sing a song called "One Little Blessing" on the radio. Okay. And I was so. He had such a beautiful style, and I was so enthralled. Yeah. I went to the phone booth, looked in the phone book, called him up. <laughs> mm -hmm. said, his mother said, he's not home, honey, you want to call back? So I kept calling until I got him one day. Yeah. I said, man, I want to sing just like you. Mm -hmm. He said, get your own singing style and leave mine the F alone. <laughs> I said, oh man, I thought that'd be a compliment. You, you sound so beautiful. He said, so, yeah. this guy let me come over to his house the week, on that weekend mm -hmm. to hear him and a group named the Turks rehearse. And boy, let me tell you, I had the time of my life. And at that particular time, I was hooked mm -hmm. and I couldn't get out of it. And, uh, and a year later, I had my own first hit record with a vocal group called the Twilighters that I wrote. Insane. Wow. And uh, that's basically what I, how I started out. And then I, I, he put me with another group named The Shields, and we had a huge record called You Cheated, You Lied, You Said You Loved Me. Mm -hmm. And I went on the road with that group. And, you know, as groups usually do, we eventually broke up. And I got with another group called The Galahads. Yeah. And we had a, a, a Charlie record named uh, Lonely Guy and another one called I'm Without a Girlfriend, which I wrote. Mm -hmm. And Alan Freed, you know who Alan Freed? You don't even know who Alan Freed is. <laughs> okay, Alan Freed is the guy, he's supposed to start all this rhythm and blues stuff. Mm -hmm. He's a disc jockey in New York. He used to play, he was the first one of the first people that started playing the doo wop music on the radio. Mm -hmm. But he came out here at that particular time. He had been, uh, 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 Gotten in, himself in trouble quite a few times with payola, so he came out here, mm -hmm. and uh, he was kind of on the skids. But he uh, came out here, and uh, the group that I was with, for some reason, he always had some reason to mess with us. So one day we did his, his TV show, mm -hmm. and um, 
uh, he was used to this kickback thing back east, but we didn't know nothing about that. And the guys I was with, they were kind of, they were from Seattle, most of them, and they were hungry, and so they wanted their money. And money never came, so we went to the union, we signed some papers against him, and, and uh, at that point, he, he blacklisted the group. Oh, my. So the, 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 the guy at the record, the, the, on the record company, Bob mm -hmm. King, came to me and says, you know, you got to send these guys back to Seattle because Alan Free's mad at him and he's, 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 I said, but Alan, but Dick Clark is playing our record every day. Who cares about Alan? He says, you don't get it. Said, what Dick Clark is doing, Alan Free started. Wow. So he's going to call Alan Free the next day or so, I mean, Dick Clark the next day or so, and Clark going to drop the record. It's dead, Charles. He said, but I want you to stay on as my A&R director. Mm -hmm. And I had never even thought about being an A&R director for a record company or anything. I'm only about 18 years old. But I did. I stayed on as an A&R director. And uh, I produced a hit record for him. And the guy didn't know how to part with money, so uh -huh. I left there uh, unhappy because he, he didn't pay me. And, uh, but while I was doing that, yes. I was going to nightclubs looking for acts, you know. And I ran to a band called the La La Wilson Band. Now, we're going to get right back to this. I want to really, really, really get into your 103rd Street Band. I'm telling you how I got there. I, I, and and okay. we're going to do that All right. right after this. Okay. producer, founder, and the leader of the Watts 103rd Street Rhythm Band has dedicated his life to sharing good times, good grooves, and good messages, and do by, hereby recognize his tremendous contributions as we celebrate African American Heritage Month 2007 here in the city of Los Angeles. Congratulations. All right, welcome back. You're watching the GGIM show. I'm GGIM, and I am in the studio with Mr. Charles Wright of the Watts 103rd Rhythm. Third Street Rhythm Band. Exactly. <laughs> now, 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 let's get that rolling properly. Give that to me. The Watts 103rd Street Rhythm Band. Absolutely. Longest name in the industry. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Tell me more. Tell me more about your whole introduction into this music industry that you've conquered. Yeah, well, uh, I, uh, like I say, I was, I used to uh, go out looking for talent. And, uh, I ran to a band called the La La Wilson Band. 